Hey everybody, this is Sheets, and I'm going to be going over uh, the CJ Cup for, I guess this is tomorrow. And it is similar to this past week's event in that it is a no-cut event. And what usually happens in the no-cut events is uh, you usually end up with a decent amount of stars and scrubs type builds um, because you don't have to worry about the, the the scrubs not being able to play all four rounds so um you you that typically what ends up happening now as usual this is a game of ownership and leverage so you might also uh you know suspect that it's a good idea to play middling builds to kind of fade the popular builds and as it is always the case in dfs the real trick is figuring out how much in expected fantasy points you're willing to give up to get that kind of leverage so it is only how many 70 75 golfers so it's a little harder to get different but still with 75 golfers it's very very easy to do especially if you go for this for these middling builds so what i am going to do though is i'm going to go through the ranges and you know as usual and tell you who i like in in, in the top range and the nine ten k's etc nine k's etc and then uh you know I'll leave it to you to figure out the best way to build. I think that, again, uh, it's going to be so obvious to build these uh, these Stars and Scrubs lineups. I think if you do want to do that, you really want to go for the low-owned of the Scrubs. And I'm going to talk to you about some guys I have that kind of fit that build. Okay, so at the top, let's call the top four the top, right? Anything over 10K. So you have uh, Rory... Uh, John Rahm, Sheffer, and Thomas. Uh, I feel as though, uh, feel as though my numbers are showing me that Rory is clearly the best of those uh, alternatives. Uh, the, the gap I have, well, is that true? Maybe not. I do have him as the best. Though. Let's put it that way. So I have him, if you have to pick one, I would pick him over Rahm. Um, with respect to ownership, it looks as though Rory's a little bit more owned than Rob, but not that much. At least that's what I'm seeing right now. Then you have a decent sized gap to the next guy would be Scheffler. And unfortunately, ownership is kind of following it. I mean, I've, I've Scheffler at 19% ownership. So you don't seem to be getting too much of a break here. Um, let's look at Justin Thomas. I have him basically tied with Scheffler. And you know what else? I have him tied with respect to ownership too. So it looks as though... Quite honestly, these top four, you're really not getting a break. Now, that's not to say they're not good plays. I'm, all I'm saying is that is that one of these is not really better than the other. Um, so if you want to play just one of these guys, you could literally just pick one and be well within your rights. And if you want to play two in the Stars and Scrubs build, um, you can literally play any of the two and be well within your rights. Moving down the 9K range, you have one, two, three, four, five six guys in here and again my goal here is to try to eliminate guys because in a 75 person field i mean you can make the case for a lot of guys but let me see what i can do here i actually have but well, this is actually somewhat interesting i do have one guy that stands out above all of the others in the 9k and it's actually not quite even, not even close and that is max homo um it's a matter of fact i think this is one thing you can sort of do is you could take your stand that Homa is the only guy you want to play in the 9K range and then cross out all the others. Like I, I have Sun JM as like a very distant number two. And then uh, then we go down to Hovland after that. And then you get, I guess you got to go all the way down to some of these others. Like Sam Burns I have is not really that good of a play at all. Nor Colin Morikawa, although I never have, never have Colin Morikawa as a strong play. So for me, it's really just, if you're hand building specifically, it's just Homa. So if you're going to do this, let's just put a couple of guys in here. Just for now. Um, with respect to the 8Ks and under, so now you have a whole bunch. You have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11 guys in the, in the 8s. So let's see how I can, you know, how I can uh, make heads or tails of these. Uh, I have at the top of the list in this range, I have Cameron Young. 
Um, he's my top play in the 8K range. And I actually do see a pretty decent drop to the next guy who would be Shane Lowry. Um, and then after that, it's a pretty decent sized drop to, to the next group, which would be Spieth, Tom Kim, um, and then a little bit further down to Keegan Bradley. And then it kind of drops off the cliff. So for me, I mean, I would, I think this is the first range where I actually see guys kind of stand out uh, over the others, at least as far as my my models go. So Cameron Young at 8,600 and Shane Lowry would be my top plays in this range. So you could put these guys in like that. Now, as you might imagine, the 7K range is going to be somewhat stacked. I mean, it always is. As a matter of fact, of the top 10 guys I have rated, um, eight of them are in the 7K range. Um, uh, so what I think you do want to do is, is, is be a stickler for ownership here. Like the top two guys that I have are Aaron Wise and Keith Mitchell, but, but those two guys also are probably the highest owned of the seven Ks. So what I would recommend is to drop a little bit in, in projection and pick up a little ownership discount and play this, this next group which I have rated a little bit below Aaron Wise and Kevin Mitchell, but their ownership, you're getting a real break on. Um, one you're not getting as big of a break on is Cameron Davis, but but it's still decent. So I definitely Cameron Davis. And then I have one, two, three, four, five guys. Should I include this guy? Yeah, let's, let's include six. Six guys who are all kind of lower own 7K guys. Let me just list these for you here. You have Seamus Power. You have Scott Stallings. You have Russell Henley. You have Mito Pereira. You have um, Tommy Fleetwood. And then the other one is Christian Bezaid. So, I mean, you all have a whole bunch of 7Ks. And what I would prefer you did is avoided the the chalkier uh wise and mitchell even though they do rate to be the best um i think that you know at this range getting that type of discount is kind of important um if anything make sure that if you play wise or mitchell because they are the best plays at least pair them with kind of lower owned you know sub 7k guys if that makes sense um speaking of which Let's talk about these. When you play the Stars and Scrubs build, you're naturally going to get to some of these 6Ks. And, and um, the good thing is they all look very low owned. Um, so what I would probably do is try to shuffle them. But just to show you who, I mean, K.H. Lee looks strong. I mean, strong enough. Um, all the, all these guys look to be under 5% too. You have Justin Suh. He's the next guy on my list. Then you have, I mean, this I can't believe this guy is really just like falling off the cliff. Gary Woodland at 6,400. Um, I mean, you have JJ Spawn. Just go, let's give you a couple. JJ Spawn. And then you have um, Davis Riley. That looks really cheap. Then you have Kirk, Alex Smalley, like all, all these guys can be filtered in through your, your stars and scrubs build and make sense. Okay. Like for example, like if you were going to, you know, I don't know, let's say, can you do this? Can you play both these guys? Yeah. Like, so you could play two of these guys up at the top and, you know, make this work really, really easily. You play, you play your, your favorite, you know, your favorite two studs, you play then your favorite 7K, and then you could just shuffle these 6Ks. Like, for example, this is not what I want to play, but like, for example, okay, you play Aaron Watts, right? And then and then you, you start with these three, and then you shuffle these 6Ks like all over the place. By the way, I think it's going to be, might be somewhat popular to do something like that. So maybe these 6Ks are not going to be as low on, um, as I might think. Um, because of the ability to do something like this. Because Aaron Wise does project to be just through the roof 
you know, like a very strong play here. Um, and he's going to be really popular. And to be able to pair him with these two, you're going to be led to those 6K guys. So I think that overall, again, I think that there's two ways that you want to play this slate. And I can't show you my full Saberson build. But what I would do is play really low-owned 6Ks in your Stars and Scrubs. And I mean really low-owned. I mean guys like, I mean, I don't even think 5% is enough. I, I think you want to get guys like, I'll, th I'll throw you a couple that are in my my early builds. Like, I have right now, like, a huge amount of Bio Kim, whoever that is. I also have a an incredible amount of Troy Merritt, right? And it's not so much because he rates to be, I mean, such a great play, but I'm showing him with 1% ownership. That's huge. I'm getting that kind of leverage. Um, so do I need to play 40% Troy Merritt to get leverage on 1%? No, but I kind of like doing stuff like that. Um, um, so that's what I would do. I would shuffle these 6Ks, be very stingy about your ownership in your Stars and Scrubs build, and then, I don't know, try to – Try to make a middling build, just just as I like to say, just for funsies. You know, what, what, how bad would it be if you played something like Cameron Young, just for just for kicks? You played some of the guys we talked about, Shane Lowry, and then it, no, if you do that, then then you could just go and do this, right, and and play the chalkier the chalkier seven Ks. And you still have enough for one stud if you wanted, you know, but but you can then go play Homa, for example, at 9,100. It's pretty easy. So these types of builds are, I don't think they're going to be very popular. Um, the ones I think are going to be popular are the Stars and Scrubs build with the more popular 6,800s and, and the lower 7Ks. But I think these mid-range builds are going to be pretty, you know, are, are going to be, uh, are not going to be chalky at all. Let's put it that way. I guess that'll do it. Uh, good luck, everybody, in the CJ Cup, and uh, let someone take it down.